A few weeks ago I covered a video on Python slots, which aimed to make Python code faster and leaner. Of course slots aren't the only way to make Python code faster, and I'm going to be showing you one of the alternatives today, which is Scython. If you haven't heard of Scython before, it works quite a bit differently from something as simple as slots. You know, Scython compiles Python or modified Python code into C, which is then compiled itself into an SO file. I'm not sure what that stands for, but it is importable by Python. So what we're essentially doing is writing Python modules in a modified version of Python that can be ran in Python at near enough the speeds of C. And there are two reasons specifically why Scython can be so much faster, or specifically why Python is so much slower. The first of these is that Python is dynamically typed. Every single time Python sees a variable, it has to check the value and see what type it is. So for example, if you had x equals five, then it could say, oh, that equals an int. But because you know of the dynamic typing, you don't set a type, and also types can change at will, so you can you know, set it to the word five if you wanted to later down the line. Python has to check every single time for every single variable what type it is. And it's very quick at doing that, but it has to do it a lot. The say, for example, that every check of a variable took one millionth of a second. It is not unplausible at all that Python will have to check variables one million times. It probably does it in a few seconds, honestly, especially if you've got large for loops. And one million times one one millionth is one. So that's already one second lost. And if you think about you know, how long a Python program can run for, just how many variables you can have, how many times they're checked, it can slow down very, very quickly. And this is where Scython comes in, because Scython, while it can just you know, Scythonize pure Python code, it relies mainly on static typing for speed ups. It means it doesn't have to do all of those dynamic type checks, meaning you get a speed up that way. The second reason why Python is so slow is because of the constant interaction between Python and the Python C API. C Python is built directly on top of C, and it needs to do some conversions between Python objects and structs in C and stuff, and that takes a while. Obviously code that's compiled to C doesn't need to access the Python to C API so much. And so you, you know, you cut out all of the time it takes to, you know, make these inferences and it speeds up massively. The important thing to remember is that Scython is not a magic wand. It doesn't, ne it won't necessarily make your code stupid faster. It also can't quite get to levels of C because there are some you know, Python C API interactions you just physically cannot avoid without just writing your code in C. But depending on the application itself, you can get some serious speed ups out of it. All right, now that all the explanation is done, I'm gonna show you some code examples. So I'm gonna do two examples today. The first is a little bit simpler, just works with numbers. The second one is a sorting uh, thing. So we're gonna be working out how to, you know, convert lists to Scython arrays and how to make that at least semi-efficient. In order to uh, create a Scython file, you need to create a pyx file. I've already done that. I've called it cfact.pyx. Uh, I'm gonna be having the Python implementation of what I'm building in Scython on the left and then the Scython thing on the right, just so you can see in real time the differences between the two. So the first thing we need to do is put a comment like this, Scython language level equals three. And this just tells Scython that we're using Python three and not Python two, basically. The second task is to create our function. Now we could, if we wanted to, create one called def factorial. However, this doesn't allow for us to use the static typing to speed everything up. So what we can do instead is we can do cpdef. This stands for Scython public definition and allows us to do type hinting like this. So we can have int factorial and an int x instead. And as you can see, it uses a C syntax. There is a pure Python syntax. I'm not gonna show that in this video because it's slower than using the standard Scython syntax. So I've just opted for this. But essentially what we're saying here for those that aren't too familiar with C is that int is, or sorry, x is an int and our factorial function will return an int. And inside here, we can do pretty much the same thing with variables as well. So we could do cdef int f equals one, and we don't need a semicolon. What we're doing is we're just setting the variable f to be an int using cdef, so this stands for Scython definition. And then we also need to do cdef int i, although we don't need to instantiate it immediately. And then we can do a for loop. So for i in 
uh, range x. And then we can just do, you know, the same thing we did before. So f uh, times equals x minus i. I can't see the keyboard, so I have no idea what I'm typing. And then we can just return f out. So as you can see, the logic is pretty much the same, honestly. You know, these final three lines are pretty much identical to what they were in the Python implementation. The only real difference is, is that we have to predefine variables we want to use, so especially if you're instantiating them. But also if you have one in, an, in a for loop, you don't have to do this, but if you do do it, it makes it a lot quicker because it's already instantiated in memory and it doesn't have to like weirdly do it at a weird time. Of course, because we set our input variables to be typed and our output variables to be typed, then we don't have to check, uh, you know, the types of i, x, and f every single you know, time in this for loop, which leads to massive speedups. So in order to compile this code, we open our terminal and the Cython library came prepackaged with a command called Cythonize. Uh, I think, did it? It should have done, yes it did. Okay, it just wasn't auto-completing. And then we can use dash b, and then we can pass the name of the files, the cfat.pyx, and it will build it for us. We can also use dash i, to build it in place, which would kind of just put all the development files in the same directory. Uh, and then if we wanted to, we can also pass dash a. I've done that accidentally, but we'll just put dash b back. And what dash a does is annotate. So I'll show you what I mean by annotation in a second. If we just build it, you can see it goes through all the steps and then it puts our thing here. So we have this build directory, which is where a lot of stuff goes. We have our cfact.c, which is the actual C code that was compiled. This is kind of all the Python API stuff. And then we have our uh, cfact da, 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 dot so, and this is the file that Python can import. So as you can see, it's just done it all for us. And if we open this HTML file, so if I reveal it in Explorer and then open it in Firefox, we get this report. So we can say that uh, yellow lines hint at Python interaction. So the cpdef, because Python has to be able to access it, it you know has to have some level of Python interaction. We can't avoid that. But the rest of the code can actually be compiled into straight up C. So you can see this is just you know the variable it's selected turned it into one. For i in range, you know it can convert generators out perfectly fine into whatever this is. And in this mathematical operation, it handles it for us. And then also the return because we set the return type, it handles that for us as well. Another nice thing, we can't really like show it off in this, we won't be able to show it from the second example, but the more yellow the line, or the brighter yellow the line, the more Python interaction is present there. So if it's quite dim, then it's not really doing an awful lot. Maybe it's just doing something to do with the errors, which is unavoidable. But if it's really bright, then it's doing a lot and you might want to have a look at it. So now it's time to compare the speed of the two codes. For the sake of brevity, I've just kind of written this quick little thing off camera. I don't want this video to be too long and boring. Uh, so I've just written this. Just a quick rundown of what it does. First, we import facts from factorial and then we uh, get the factorial of 100, 10,000 times from the Python implementation. We do exactly the same thing from the Cython implementation, hence cfact here. We just print the times, it completes it in, and then say how much faster Cython actually is using a little bit of mathematics. So if we do Python benchmark, we can see that Cython in this case is 45 times faster. I don't know if we'll, uh, we'll be mathematically allowed to do this. Oh, we are mathematically allowed to do this. There we go. So Cython is 296 times faster in that respect. What if we ramp it? How fast can we get it to go? I'm messing up. But as you can see already, and that's actually a lot faster than I thought it was we were gonna get. Holy crap. We can see already that Scython for operations like this is stupidly quick. And that annotation actually helped us explain why, because you know we're not checking the types of any variables we're working with, and we have very minimal interaction between the Python C API. So we're losing like not a lot of time. Okay, it's about the same sort of speed. We're not losing much time at all um, to any of those operations when we use Scython. And you can see that we get huge speed up bonuses. So the second example I'm gonna show you is one that is a little bit more complicated. And this is one that involves utilizing, you know, Python objects like lists, for example. Uh, so I've already taken the liberty of creating a new sort file. I've already taken the liberty of including the first comment line. And in this, we need to do you know things a little bit differently. 
So we're just doing a simple bubble sort just for ease of explanation. We need to do cp diff uh, list sort and then list and I'm going to call this array. Uh, now one of the limitations with Cython is that we can't say, for example, a list of string to define, you know, an array of a string because the raw Python objects don't have that ability. It's only really type checkers that can deal with that. So all we can tell Cython is that this is a list of some description. And then we just have to make sure that the list is of the correct type when we do it. We're not going to do any validation here. Um, but you know, that's the sort of thing you would need to think about. In terms of actually creating some C arrays, you would need to import two libraries. So we could do from array, import array, and then from C Python, uh, C import array. Uh, so this first one adds the array kind of creator that's in the standard libs. So this is actually in the standard lib you can create C arrays. Uh, that imports that in. And then this C Python C import thing, I'm not 100% sure what it does, but it like adds and changes some stuff to do with Cython specifically. Uh, the documentation doesn't really go into a huge amount of detail about what exactly it's doing, but the example included it, so I think it's pretty important. So in order to create our array, we kind of do the same things we did before. So we have int, and then we need a square bracket, and then a colon inside the square brackets. And then we're going to call this our C array, which equals array of type integer array. Uh, so this i is of integer. If you had a string array, it would be s, you know, etc. But we want an i. You can't actually put a number in place of this colon. I have tried. It doesn't like it. You cannot set the length of an array. It has to be, like, well, equal to the array of this. So I'm presuming it's not any slower, um, but it's just a site and limitation, I suppose. And then we also need to define our sorted array, which we're going to define as sr. And then we're going to have sr equals c sort, cr len r, and then we're going to have return uh, list sr. So this c sort is actually something we're going to define, and to do that we're going to do a c def of, and that's going to take an int array, and that's going to be called c sort. And it's going to take an int array of its own called r. And for the sake of speed, I believe it's more efficient to just pass this um, because I don't think there is a way of actually getting the length of an int array using Cython itself, which is a bit weird, but it's whatever. Uh, so we pass the size of the array and the actual array itself. So here we have to cdef int i and in j. We don't have to initialize either. And for i in range n, uh, and then for j in range n minus i minus 1 if uh God, if so this is one of the things i was saying about the extension it doesn't do auto indents which is really annoying and also it gets the comments wrong as well which is also really annoying it's uh, the comments are still you know your, your hashtags not your things but was whatever it's fine so if you know one uh, one element is greater than the other, we can do the f uh, the fancy Python thing of having R J and then R J plus one equals R J plus one R oops and then R J. I don't know if that's a thing more or less exclusive to Python, but that's something I learned literally uh, a few weeks ago that you could do. And then we're just going to turn the array out of that. And that is our sorting uh, system. So to recap, we have a sort that is a Cython public definition that Python can access that, that takes a list and returns a list. We then set our C arrays in here. Uh, and then we sort the array using this function, which in itself takes a C int array and the size and then just does, you know, our normal logic, literally unmodified uh, logic as well. And then we just, you know, convert it to a list at the end. Uh, so Python can work with it. So if we go in here and we Cythonize, I don't know why I'm not getting the the order completes there. And if we do our dash a dash b, I've already taken the liberty of cleaning up my source files in the previous one. Um, sort of be C sort, sorry. I uh, know I wanted to call this C sort, didn't I? Otherwise the imports are going to get confused when I try and benchmark them. Uh, C sort of be x. And I'll annotate it again. This one will take a little bit longer because it's a more complex. Uh, problem that we're trying to solve here. There we go. 
And if we then, uh, do I still have the directory loaded? I do, okay. So if we then look at the annotations for this, we can see there's a lot more Python interaction here. So this one is very, very bright because you know we're having to deal with just lists straight up. This one we're having to do to deal with arrays which do take the uh, the Python C API and then the conversions to the list and even some of the mathematical operations here. Um, where it's actually list indexing operations because this is one of the things where you know Python errors need to be repropagated. Um, and so, you know, you have the Python C API to be able to raise these errors and you can't really get around that. But everything else is C speed. Uh, this actually takes some, what is this? What is this doing? Set string add trace back. Okay, I'm not 100% sure why that's coming up like that. I guess maybe it's because it has to like propagate errors out or something. Um, but this is a pretty decent look. It probably could be improved. If, if anyone does know a way of improving it, and do let me know. Uh, in the comments below, but I think that's, uh, you know, it's good enough for explanation purposes. So again, we're ready to benchmark. Uh, I've taken the liberty of just kind of modifying our previous benchmark. So we're now creating an array of a thousand values between one and a thousand. And then we're just getting uh, both Python and Scython to sort them 10 times. And then we'll see how much quicker Scython actually is than Python. In this case, it's about 40 times faster. I wasn't expecting it to be done so quickly there. Uh, can I get some time to actually talk, please? There we go. So I, I was originally going to say while it was doing that before it completed like stupidly quick, that I wanted to kind of reiterate that Scython isn't necessarily a magic wand. I've shown you two examples where Scython particularly excels. The factorial kind of caught me off guard by just how much faster it was. But sorting, you know, especially with the bubble sort, there are other types of sorts as well um, that Scython can be good at, you know, especially any that involve uh, mathematical operations. Uh, theoretically, stuff like counting sorts and radix sorts or radix sorts, or however you're supposed to pronounce that, would be quicker because they're doing more mathematical operations and less list accessing. But in terms of, you know, if you were to just Scythonize it, it's about 42 times faster this time. If you just Scythonize your project completely at random, uh, there is a chance you won't get any speed benefits and it might actually be slower as well. So you do need to, you know, keep in mind um, the Scython syntax. You need to keep in mind Scython strengths. So you can have uh, a Python library that has, you know, 10 Python modules and one Scython module. That's something you can just do. If you have a particularly mathematical module, then you can Scythonize it and then that part of the program will be quicker, especially if you if you call that a lot and then you know the speed of your overall program will increase. So you don't necessarily have to rewrite the entire thing in Scython. But that's gonna do it for this video. Sorry it was a little bit long. There was just you know a lot to cover. Scython is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to explain and I wanted to make sure I kind of covered everything. So yeah. If you liked the video, then let me know by hitting the like button and maybe hit the subscribe button as well if you really enjoyed it. If you have any questions uh, about what you've seen in the video, leave in the comments. Or if you have any suggestions about things you want me to cover, then let me know down below as well. I do want to cover stuff like number and PyPy Pi and you know other things that make Python quicker. So if there's anything you know about in particular, um, then do let me know and I might kind of prioritize it I suppose. Of course if you enjoy the content and want to support it then you can become a member by using the join button below or pledging on the Patreon. Either way one pound a month you could be on the screen like these people here and I will see you next time where we'll probably be talking about number next time actually I think I'm going to do. Um, so I will see you for that.